Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your friendly neighborhood data AI and engineering consultancy. So, I know it's been a little while since I've made a video. I've been busy, all right? And I've got so many things I need to talk about that have come out since Data AI Summit that have got features coming out of every pore about things I need to talk about. But the first one, probably the most exciting one, the one that got the biggest oohs and ahs at the Data AI Summit, is Agent Brits. And I know the name could probably do with a little bit of work, but it's cool. Essentially, it's a low-code, prompt-enabled way of building an agent. Now, that is crazy, because agents are a fairly new, cutting-edge thing people have suddenly got incredibly excited about. And the fact that we've now got the ability to build it with no technical skill whatsoever is insane. Now, there's a bunch of things that Agent Bricks does out, the, out of the box. It can do like get information out of all these PDFs, do like information extraction stuff. Uh, you can do like a knowledge assistance, like a QA, Q and A, build a Q and A across all of my HR policies. You can do that using it. But one of the ones that's most interesting for me is genie management or a multi-agent supervisor. Essentially, and each genie space is its own little agent of its own. It's a SQL writer agent that's going to go away and write some SQL and answer some questions for you. But one of the hardest things to try and get into users' minds is how to know, for this question, I go to this space. For this question, I go to this space, and this space, and this space, etc. So to build a little thing that sits over the top and goes, what? You're asking about that? Oh, well, I'll, I'll just go and ask a question for you, and I will coordinate all the variety of genie spaces. And you can do that using Agent Bricks. Now, I do need to be clear, it is still in beta. It is not production ready. It is fresh out. Feel free to start playing with it. It's cool. But pinch of salt. It is brand spanking new. But the plan is I'm going to show you how to get started. We're going to have a quick look at Agent Bricks. We're going to build something that sits across the top of two genie spaces and answers questions for me. Simple as that. Quick video. Show you how that works. And I hope you're impressed as I am because it is crazy how easy it is. That's the plan. Uh, as always, if you're new at it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, just let us know what you want us, what features I should be doing next, because I've got so many features that I need to get started somewhere. So yeah, let's go have a look. Okay, so first things first, I have enabled this. So there's a couple of caveats in terms of being able to use Agent Bricks as it stands. It has to, you have to have the preview enabled. You have to have everything turned on. You need to be using Unity Catalog and serverless and all those things. You need to be in some specific regions. So I've got uh, East US uh, workspace set up here. It's not available in every region. Poor old UK South doesn't have it yet. Oh, we will eventually. Uh, but yeah, if you've ticked all the boxes, you've enabled the preview, then you can get started. Now, because we're using this multi-agent thing, because I want to use it over genie spaces, I've got two super quick noddy genie spaces I set up. I've done very little to make it fancy. Uh, but essentially, in the by default in a catalog, you've got these sample databases just installed by, by default these days. There's one of our bakehouse information, there's one with like, some AccuWeather information. So I just grabbed those two, made a genie space on top of those. I've done zero prep work, right? Uh, so I've got the bakehouse, which is just give me some information about the bakehouse. I've done the barest bit of giving it a description, uh, and I've given it some instructions. If someone asks you about biscuits, well, these are the biscuits. These are the products I consider to be a biscuit. If anyone wants to come up pies, please see this. So I can say, uh, how many biscuits did we sell? And it will actually at least understand what I'm talking about once the serverless uh, started up. But nothing crazy there. It is like the most basic genie room on top of some sample data. And I did the same over on the other side. I did the same on the uh, AccuWeather stuff. So while that's just running, we'll get a nip over here. Have a look at the other genie space. If I go back here, get the weatherman up, and then we can go. Let's just let's explain the data. So see what's in there. So my bakehouse. There we go. You can see how many biscuits are sold. That's just the total product sold of, of products I've classified as a biscuit. Weatherman. It's got some forecast information. It's got some historical information. Uh, is London hotter than Paris? That's a question. It's a strange question. You probably say it's not really the kind of things they're trying to answer, but at least we can answer those kind of questions. It's historical uh, temperature information, it's um, amount of sun, it's forecasts in some certain things. It's it's that kind of area. 
Blah, I stopped going. Eh, whatever. So essentially, I've built a bunch of genie spaces. Long story short. Uh, and then I need to go, well, if I'm pre teaching my users, I need to say, well, okay, if, if you've got a baking question, go to the bakehouse. If you've got a weather question, go to the weatherman. And I can give it names and give it descriptions. I can build it in such a way to try and encourage that kind of thinking. But it's not idiot proof. So we need to make something that will just, just give me any of your questions and I'll just figure out who to ask. We can be the really smart data analyst sitting in the middle. So you can see I've built one in advance. We're going to go and create a new one. So again, this is Agent Bricks. I've got this little Agents button down at the side. Agent Bricks, you can see everything that's going on here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see the out-of-the-box version that I've got. So I can do some information extraction, knowledge assistance, those things I mentioned. This is the one we're going to have a look at, this multi-agent supervisor. Um, so again, I can have several different agents, and this agent just sits and coordinates the agents. And a genie space is just really an agent. So I'm just using this to sit on top of my various different agents. So this is my data analyst, Joe. So I can get my users, just, just ask Joe. Tell guys, Joe, whatever you need to know. Uh, and he can answer questions around Bakehouse, stats, or the weather. Because, you know, like any good British data analyst, we have to have a conversation about the weather before we do any real work. That's just how we work. Uh, cool. Okay. So there's not really much I can then need to think about. It's just, the, well, which are the genie spaces and other agents I want to hook up? So agent number one. Well, it's, it's a genie space. I could add MTP in there. I can add other agents in there. There's things that we can do, which is cool. To keep it easy, just, I want to add first genie space. Well, I just add the weatherman. And it's going to give it a little a little name there. It's going to show the user that name. So we do need to make sure that makes sense. For now, I'll keep it there so you can see what it's doing. And you can get it. I've already got a description. Let's pull that description from the genie space I used. I can then add another agent. Use the other genie space. Make this the big bakehouse. Again, similar stuff, it's pulled that in. And then finally, I've got like some, some optional instructions. So how it should respond, format, tone, what should you do for those kind of things. Uh, be very specific. You only know about Bakehouse and weather. If someone asks about insurance. No, nothing. Or whatever, personality. Also talk, talk like a pirate. Whatever you want to do in terms of that space. That is it. That is that is all of the configuration and the information and everything I can plug into it. Uh, now it's going to go off. It's going to run a little bit of a job that looks at those genie spaces, it pulls the things together, figures out how they should work together. Now when I ran this, it took about five minutes or so for this agent to stop updating. So let me just tab open. We're going to come back towards the end of the video and just see how well this worked. But really didn't take long for a quick demo to actually come together. So I was impressed, but I'm not going to make you sit here. I'm not going to bother editing the video to speed up. I'm just going to switch tabs, do a blue beta, go to one I made earlier, which is over here. Okay, so we've got Data Rollins Joe. We can also, down at the bottom of this screen, if I can scroll down a bit. Ugh. Okay, I'll make my screen lower. Whoop. There we go. Okay, so you've got this other one that I've created called my Genie's Lamp because I was feeling punny at the time. <laughs> okay, I can't scroll down to it. Uh, there we go. The genie lamp is there. So this is what I made earlier, and you can see it looks exactly the same. I've just got these two genie spaces hooked up to it. I've got my optional clue saying I was a bit better about typing it. You only know about these two things. Again, no other config has been done, has been done in here. Except now, instead of when I had this agent updating, I've just got this, we'll start typing. It's ready for you to use. So I can now test it and go, well, uh, what was our most popular biscuit? I'm getting the information about biscuits is held within the genie space to do with Bakehouse. Okay, there we go. This is our noses on the Bakehouse sales data. You can see it's then decided it's going to send a request into the Bakehouse agent. It's then rebuilt that, so it's got a written a proper genie uh, space question that it's putting down to that agent. That agent's going to go and then respond going to generate some SQL, going to give some responses, and then my little coordination agent's going to get those responses, interpret the data, and then tell me what it thinks about it. And again, there's nothing in here when I was like, this is the one you need to use. So the Golden Gate Ginger, with some information, it's interpreted that for me. 
So it's actually giving me a nice little blurb so I can then see what it thinks. Um, which is the hotter city between London, Paris, and Amsterdam. So that's switching track. That's about weather data. So automatically it's looked at that question and said, well, okay, that's weather data. I'm going to use agent, the weatherman. It's pointed it to the right genie space. It's written the question. It's interpreted the, the hottest city as compare the average temperatures of London, Paris, and Amsterdam, which is the hottest. That's returned that result. Again, so the end of that one, that is the end of the genie space doing its work. The genie space has given its results back, but then this supervisor agent has taken those results and then given me a nice bit of a thing. I mean, what? London's cold. What? Ah, madness. Doesn't feel like it at the moment. Um, again, this is 2024 data, is all that's in that sample. But how easy is that? That is absolutely nuts that it took a couple of button presses for this thing to come through. You can see, there we go, switching back to my previous agent. That's now ready to go. That's now saying, yep, done. Agent's built, endpoints working. You can go and start having a play with this agent. Now, this is just in my little, my little test area. I can open it in the playground. I can use it like any other uh, endpoint I've built. I can go and switch to the actual endpoint. That's not giving it that pretty a name. I can see it is here. I can go and have a look at it. I can look at some tags. I can look at some set of permissions on it. Uh, I can just go, well, I want to use it. I can generate some scripts, but I just want to use this. Now I've got my full endpoint evaluation. So I can come in here and go, um, make me a list of franchises grouped by their most popular product. Now that's the thing the genie would find a bit confusing. Now, essentially, this is going to say, well, tell me the list of franchises and what their most popular product is, and then group the ones together that are common. Now, it's an interesting one. It's a slightly multi-step thing. Go, well, work out the data and then group things up. You could write it as a SQL query to do like list ag these days, string ag, make it an array. Um, it's going to do an interesting thing. So this is most likely, when I was testing it earlier, so the agent, the, the genie room, genie space, goes off, makes its list of products, just says, well, for each franchise, here's the most popular product for that franchise. Then it brings back, it passes that to my supervisor. My supervisor then takes that data, interprets that data, and goes, well, okay, well, here's, here's my list. So actually, we can see that the most popular, popular product, that the product where the highest number of franchises had that as the most popular product is our Outback Oatmeal. Interesting stuff in terms of how that actually works. So, yeah, interesting stats, interesting ways of doing it. Everything's turned into a multi-step. And again, this is based on the agent I built at the start of this video, which is a couple of minutes ago, not the one that I built earlier, which again, saved me a whole, I don't know, two minutes of this video. And that's, that's about all I wanted to show you for now. That is, that is just the most basic information that you possibly have. Uh, you can do a load of stuff uh, digging further into it with the actual endpoint itself. You can go and work out at the endpoint. You can have a look at the monitoring for it. You can do some configuration on the endpoint. There's, there's stuff you can do around here to, to do some deeper, more productionization stuff. But I'd say that that is a different video in itself. For now, just the very first, this is a problem that we had to actually code around and get specialist AI engineers around and actually think about that productionization problem. If it's going to be that easy to go, oh, well, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got a couple of NPC, uh, MCP servers. I've got my own little inter internal Q&A agent. And I've got some genie spaces. Just, just make a generic bot that sits over the top that can talk to any of it and answer any question. It's that easy. Now, obviously, there's questions about production grade. How do you make it testable and robust? How do you make sure it improves over time and can do the good evaluation? What is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost me when it goes, gets really popular and all my users use it? Loads and loads of questions in there, and I don't have the answers right. This is in beta. It's coming out. It's starting its journey, but it is so cool in terms of how quickly you can build that stuff without being on the absolute cutting edge of how to actually build it manually yourself in Python. So, yeah, that's it. That is Agent Bricks as it currently stands. Now, we'll do some more videos on a similar thing, just showing you how you use the information extraction, how you use the knowledge assistant, because actually it's really cool being able to set up those really basic, incredibly useful agents. 
and maybe we'll build that and then attach it to this one and they'll be able to do more and more and more stuff. But as a first pass, Agent Bricks, a couple of button presses, a couple of prompts to help it know what it's doing. And it can do some really, really cool things, especially if you're looking at using Genie at scale. If you're using Genie across tens, 50, 100 different uh, Genie spaces and thinking about how you coordinate that, this takes that problem away and makes the user experience that much better. Plus, it's doing some interpretation of the data on top. Now, be very careful because that thing that was getting the results from the Genie space and then interpreting it and telling me about it, that's sending some of my data into the LLM. So make sure you've got your proper full InfoSec architecture approvals. You know exactly where your data is going. But yeah, pretty darn cool. Right, that is all I want to talk about today. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you've had a play with Agent Bricks yet or if you have a load of crazy, exciting plans for it. Because yeah, it's pretty cool. See you next time. Cheers.